much of the modern nation of Ghana today was dominated by a state known as Ashanti. Ashanti, also known as the Ashanti, was the last group to emerge and the largest and most powerful of a series of states formed in the forest region of southern Ghana by people known as the Ikan. Actually, the name Ashanti means warlike. Ashanti were fierce fighters and had a slogan, If I go forward, I die. If I go backward, I die. Better go forward and die. The Ashanti people are closely intertwined with the history of Ghana. The Ashanti is the largest tribe in Ghana and the region currently has a population of 11 million who speak Twai as a first or second language. The Ashanti Empire was a pre-colonial West African state that emerged in the 16th century. As the Ashanti tribes grew in size and power, they began forming kingdoms. In 1670, Osei Tutu united all the kingdoms and became Ashanti Ene, or King of the Ashanti Empire, in 1696. Tutu was regarded as an expert diplomat. In 1700, he negotiated several alliances of Akan-speaking people who were now loyal to his central authority in order to create the Ashanti Union. Within 50 years, the Ashanti commanded the largest and strongest state on the Guinea coast. Osel Tutu built Kumasi, the capital of the new empire, which remains an important city in modern Ghana. He also created a constitution, reorganized and centralized the military, and created a new cultural festival, Odwira, which symbolized the new union. Most importantly, he created a golden stool, which he argued represented the ancestors of all the Ashanti, and it serves as the Ashanti Enes throne. This shows that the king is favored by the gods. Upon that stool, Osel Tutu legitimized his rule and that of the royal dynasty that followed him. They deemed the loss of their king a small thing compared with the loss of their golden stool. Interestingly, the Ashanti king is still an important figure today. Though he must coexist within Ghana's democratic government, his position is part of the state's constitution. He is a cultural leader presiding at traditional ceremonies and even resolving disputes in the traditional Ashanti judicial system, which is used as an alternative to the official court system by many. The Ashanti kingdom had two great sources of wealth. First, they controlled access to highly productive gold mines. The region was so rich in gold that the Europeans simply called it the Gold Coast. Osai Tutu made the gold mines royal possessions. He also made gold dust the circulating currency in the empire. Gold dust was frequently accumulated by Ashanti citizens, particularly by the evolving wealthy merchant class. However, even relatively poor subjects used gold dust as ornamentation on their clothing and other possessions. Larger gold ornaments owed by the royal family and the wealthy were far more valuable. Periodically, they were melted down and fashioned into new patterns of display in jewelry and statuary. There are many festivals in Ashanti Empire. These include a Dae festival, which within a six-week cycle has to celebration days, once on a Sunday known as Akwasia Day and on a Wednesday known as Aku Day. Ashanti Yam Festival, which marks the first harvest of yams during the autumn season, and the Saperewa, which belongs to a class of up lute codophones typical in West Africa. The Ashanti are noted for their expertise in a variety of specialized crafts, and their wood carvings and textiles are renowned for their beauty. Of these crafts, only pottery making is primarily a female activity. Traditionally, the Kente clothes is a festival clothes worn mainly during the annual and seasonal festivals, 
which are happy occasions. Today, they are not only used for festive occasions, but also during the ritual associated with the important events of life, such as marriages, death, and religious worship. Wood carving is divided into many branches, each with its own specialists. Among the major products are wooden sculptures of outstanding artistic quality and the talking drum. Ashanti are a matrilineal society where the line of descent is traced through the female an Ashanti girl is betrothed with a golden ring called Petia, meaning I love you. If not in childhood, immediately after the puberty ceremony.